From stunning sequels to tactical twists on old titles, here are the 10 best strategy games to play in 2020. Let's frame this year in terms we'll all understand. 2020 has technically been a victory for strategy fans with wonderful new additions to venerable franchises, but there's also that scratching sensation that things could have gone better. It's been something of a Pyrrhic victory, lots of new games, but we're still waiting for Stronghold Warlords, Humankind and Age of Empires 4. With that in mind, we've rounded up 10 essential strategy titles from recent years to keep you entertained until 2021 and beyond. And before we get started, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the tactical intelligence bell so you know when our next video unit drops. Here, in no particular order whatsoever, are the best strategy games to play on PC in 2020. I'm on it. Mission accomplished. Ah, Crusader Kings. A game that's so complicated that it sometimes feels like learning to code backwards. You often know what you want, and that means when you finally do manage to conquer a neighbour or change your line of succession, it feels like you've properly earned it. The third game retains that complexity, but it's easy to access. The tutorial is much improved, and handy tooltips help you to navigate the tangle of titles, plots and claims. And it's worth learning, because where else can you discover that your trusted steward has a taste for human flesh? Then blackmail said steward to uncover more secrets, then imprison him for cannibalism just in case he gets grumpy about being blackmailed. There's even a nice throwback to the second game in that the tutorial is set where most new CK2 players learned the game. It's like a meta-textual history lesson of its own. Look, you just can't have a best strategy games list without a total war, except that in our 2019 list, that's uh, exactly what happened. But in our defence, Three Kingdoms wasn't out at the time and you can think of this entry as begging for forgiveness. If you yearn for the classic TW experience with a touch of cinematic elan, Three Kingdoms is essential. Set during a period of real conflict that inspired the romance of the Three Kingdoms, it blends historical fact with dramatic fiction. The battles are as stirring as ever, but it's the changes on the campaign map that makes Three Kingdoms stand out. Diplomacy and espionage are more nuanced and effective than ever before, and we're increasingly spoiled for choice when it comes to the incredible TW titles. The recent Total War saga Troy is full of engaging tactical changes and brilliant new maps too. There, two Total War games in one list. The balance is redressed. It's in the rules that we have to include at least one Commandos style game in a list like this, and while we could have enjoyed a standoff between this and Shadow Tactics, we already included that in our Feudal Japan video. And Desperados 3 deserves to be here. It's a game that takes everything satisfying about the genre, immaculate planning, thoughtful problem solving, bludgeoning, and mixes it with a brilliant story and characters to boot. The maps are so good that you feel embarrassed for other games in a way, and the group synergies are more satisfying than ever, especially when you start using Isabel's voodoo mind powers to make enemies stumble into oblivion. And like many other real-time tactical games, the replayability is directly proportional to your stealth-efficient attempts to navigate each level, because yes, you completed it, but you'll always be haunted by the possibility of a smarter solution. I'll be damned. It would be easy enough to slap an XCOM game in here, so consider this our pre-fight announcement. Yes, XCOM is incredible, and yes, you should play it, but seeing as this is a 2020 list, we're going for Gears Tactics instead, a game that has many of the same qualities but you may have ignored till now. And it's easy to see why. Think Gears and your mind goes to low drama featuring giant worms and men who look like disappointed cartoon trucks. But the most surprising thing about Gears Tactics is how natural it feels. That brutal Gears loop of shoot, outflank, reload is preserved here, you just have more time to think about it all. It's still deliciously cheesy and impossibly violent, but somehow sawing a locust in half suddenly seems cerebral since you've had so much time to think about it. Ah, tactical evisceration. And here we have it. 
the wise old man of strategy games, nestled in the middle of this list like a grandfather embedded on the sofa after Christmas dinner. Alright, so Civ 6 isn't actually that old, I mean it did come out in 2016, but there's something about Sid Meier's venerable series that feels as comforting as an old jumper. That doesn't mean it's obsolete though, Civ 6 is the most modern, playable iteration of the series to date. This means it's more dynamic and expansive than ever before. Cities now physically spread across the map, research into technology and culture is more important than ever, and competing leaders have their own agendas based on their historical traits. And yes, Gandhi is still secretly very nuke happy. All is as it should be. Get this and you'll never need another Civ game in your life. Until of course uh, Civ 7 comes along, obviously. Of all the most delightfully killable enemies in games, nothing really compares to giant alien insects. You can't ask them nicely to stop devouring your citizens, and unlike real insects, which you should never try to kill with mechanised artillery, they're an invasive species that damages our delicate ecosystem. These are two of many reasons why you should play Into the Breach, a 2018 masterclass in turn-based strategy from the team behind FTL. It might look simple, but don't be fooled. Before too long you'll be thinking multiple steps ahead, working out ways to master the environment and batter giant bugs into the path of their own projectiles. Think of it like chess, but with beetles the size of churches. And it's all predicated on a story about jumping back through time to fix the doomed past, which is exactly the excuse you need to try again when the insects win, which they will, often. Many popular strategy games fall into one of two archetypes, beards and spears, or marines and bugs. But Age of Wonders Planetfall does a stellar job of subverting our preconceptions. It's a fast 4x strategy game in a sci-fi setting, but one with the wild imagination of a gifted child's art book. The resulting game is like the offspring of an arranged marriage in Crusader Kings between Civ and XCOM, and what a beautiful, talented child it is. You rebuild in a cosmic dark age with one of six unique factions, which include everything from dinosaur riding Amazons to cyborg zombies who repurpose enemy body parts. There's also tons of choice here in terms of how you play. Your empire can be an environmental paradise or a military dictatorship, and there are multiple paths to victory, including conquest, diplomacy, or good old doomsday weapons. Top it off with a rich, weird sci-fi world, and you have a game that's surprising in all the right ways. Drop your weapons and dismount that dinosaur right now. We realise that this will be the third time we lean into this. This game's a bit like the other game you like, shtick, but it's helpful for understanding what Iron Harvest is. If you love Relic's classic approach to real-time strategy, you'll be well set here. Think Company of Heroes set in an alternate timeline with giant lumbering diesel punk mechs that look like they might violently explode at any moment. And if I'm honest, that really doesn't even do justice to Iron Harvest. Just look at it. You don't just watch a battle here, you feel it. Fights start small and escalate to the point that the sights and sounds almost overwhelm you. Even watching yourself lose is a spectacle worth your time. It's slower and more deliberate than many similar RTS games, but that feels natural given the setting and tech. Well, as natural as a 12-foot military trash can can possibly feel. We strategy fans are a controlling lot. We love everything to run at optimum efficiency. We like to see potential problems and then squash them. But real life, populated as it is by filthy, unpredictable humans, often isn't like that. However much you'd like your sci-fi colony to operate with metronomic efficiency, RimWorld's intelligent AI storytelling means that things will just never go to plan. You might crave the quiet life, but the spectre of chaos is always there to test your resolve and adaptability. One moment everything is going fine, the next you're managing cannibal colonists or harvesting organs to make extra coin. It's the strategy game equivalent of one of those exploding snake in a can toys in that it's only a matter of time before something goes pop, and once that happens it's incredibly difficult to put everything back how it was. So the lesson with RimWorld then is to embrace the pandemonium and get on selling those kidneys. Let's finish up by looking backwards. Ok, well not really that far backwards, we're only going back to June 2020 and the remastered Command & Conquer collection. 
We'll get the bare bones stuff out of the way first. This includes Command and Conquer and Red Alert, both remastered in 4K by former members of the Westworld Studios team. It has all three expansions, rejig multiplayer, a fresh UI and a map editor, among other things. And if the main reason you're here is to relive memories of ludicrous Cold War conflict, cheesy FMV scenes and the sizzle of soldiers getting zapped by Tesla coils, you will not be disappointed. It's still immensely fun to play to, a sharp, swift reminder of how CNC defined the RTS genre 25 years back. There's really only one way we can end this one, isn't there? Video editor, please play us out to the baddest baseline in all of gaming. Listen to that. Poetry with tanks. And as reluctant as I am to talk over this track, I'll finish up by asking you to tactically advance your finger to the like button if you enjoyed this vid, and enlist with Logitech G for more videos like this one. Sorry about all the military analogies by the way, it's this music, you know? Dismissed. <laughs>